So while we're on the topic of correlations and lags, I wanted to show you a nice tool that uh, you can use if you're interested in how two of your time series may be correlated with each other at different lags in time. And so what do I mean by correlated with each other at different lags in time? Well, if we think about our desert system, the biology of the system is the rain falls, it generates greenness, and that results in food for rodents that they can then turn into offspring and increased population numbers. At each one of these steps, we expect there to be a lag. So when the rain falls in the desert, things don't instantaneously turn green. There is a lag that has to occur because plants have to generate leaves, seeds need to germinate, plants need to grow. And so between the rain and the plants, we expect a lag. And then once those resources become available, it takes time for rodents to turn those resources into offspring. If we're interested in understanding how the system is working, one of the things we may be interested in is trying to get, figure out where that time lag is between when our rains show up and when the plants turn green. So one of the ways to do that is by using some of these concepts, except now trying to relate the data points from one time series to the data points of another time series and sliding them in comparison to each other to see when we get the strongest correlations between the time points in this time series and the time points in this time series. We're going to need a different package for doing this. So we're going to load the library I told you to install for this week, which is ASTSA. <laughs> I don't have it installed yet. All right. I now have it installed. Let's uh, load that now. Perfect. All right, we're going to use the ATSA package and we're going to use a function called lag2.plot. And we're going to give it our rain time series and NDVI time series object. And we're going to say lags up to 12. And so lags up to 12 means we're going to compare things up to a 12 month difference in time span between a focal time point and uh, the time points in the past. Let's run this. And now we get this beautiful array of plots here that have our rain values on the X and our NDVI or greenness values on the Y. And they are arranged with varying lags. So up in this upper left-hand corner, what we're seeing is a lag of one. Let me expand this just a little bit for you there. Um, what we're seeing is a lag of zero, excuse me. And up in this upper hand, right hand corner, we can see the correlation coefficient. What this red line is showing us is basically a smooth regression. It's a low S regression. And so it's basically taking these local or small regressions and smoothing across this relationship. And so it's giving us a look at whether or not there's any nonlinearities as well in this correlation. When we gave it the rain as our first data object. What we were telling it was we wanted rain to be the one that was lagged behind NDVI, which in this system makes sense. Rain comes first and then plants green. Plants don't green and then rain comes. So we gave it the, the variable that we wanted to be lagged first. And now that's what we're, all these panels are now showing us is that as we now look at rain from the previous time steps, we have NDVI from our focal observation at time t, if we look at the rain value that came at t minus one or one month before our focal observation, this is now what the correlation uh, that we see. And what we can see is that it's, it's a stronger correlation coefficient than what we had. And now as we continue to lag that rain value, so now in this next panel here, this is the rain value from two months before the greenness value that we're interested in, this correlation starts to decay. And what this is telling us is that it really is a generally a one month signal that's coming through in our data where you have rains and that's determining the greenness in the next month with perhaps a little bit of influence of the rain that's occurring in the current month and the rain that's occurring two months ago having some uh, potential impact on the system.
So, so this is a nice visual visualization, but maybe we want something that's a little more like our ACF and PACF functions. And we can do that with something called a cross correlation function that I've typed over here in the R script. And similarly, we give it our time series objects that we want to have compared. So let's give it again, the rain and the series objects. Let's run this. And so this gives us a different visualization of what we were seeing on those lag plots. Here's our lag of zero. So this is this correlation coefficient that if we compare the greenness in a particular month to the rain that occurred in that month, this is the correlation coefficient that we, we get. And that is indeed what we were seeing on the other graph. So this really is just a redisplay of those correlation coefficients. Our strongest correlation coefficient is occurring at a lag of one month. It decays uh, at a lag of two months where rain is occurring two months prior to the greenness we're interested in, and then it really disappears. And then we start to see these peaks again about a year later, but that's an echo effect of seasonality. So this is exactly what we would expect in a seasonal system. In this graph, it's also showing you the lags forwards, moving rain further and further into the future and seeing how that relates to our greenness at our focal observation. Mm -hmm. So why don't you now go do exactly what we just did with RAIN and NDVI, but do it instead with NDVI and rodents. And that's it for this week. I'll be in class for those who uh, want to be able to ask questions. Next week's lesson, we're going to start to put a lot of this together and start to do time series modeling.